Hey guys, these are my predictions for the 2016 NXL C2 paper. So I am not an examiner. I do not know any insider information. I do not know any secrets. I do not know what is definitely going to come up on the exam. And I don't teach at Excel. But what I have done is sat down, gone through all the past papers, gone through the specifications, gone through the examiner's reports, and I've thought really carefully about this. But I'm trying to see patterns in places where there shouldn't be patterns. So don't just revise the things that I say here. Use it as a basis for your revision, but make sure you cover everything thoroughly. So your exams are going to have a couple of six more questions in there. They're really, really wordy. And there are going to be multiple choice things. Now one thing the examiners have picked up on, one thing that we can, you know, definitely, as definitely as we can say anything, is going to come up is balancing equations. Because the examiners see problems with this every single year. So this is the sort of thing they like to ask if they see problems coming up over and over again. Now the examiners are going to expect you to turn word equations into symbol equations and potentially turn symbol equations back into word equations. They can expect you to know how salts are made. So your acids combining with your metals, they can expect you to know all of those general equations and be able to go from an experiment to produce an equation. They also expect you to know the formulas of ions, common ions, and then being able to work out the formula of things from those common ions. This all relates back to working out the formula of salts. This is something that's highlighted by the examiners every single year that students can't do very well. So it's really worth spending the time practicing this. Something that's a trend across all exams is experimental questions. They love asking these. So they're going to expect you to be able to work out your means, your anomalies, draw graphs, draw lines the best fit, interpret data, see patterns, and potentially be able to describe an experiment, how it works. So the sort of experiments we're talking about here are all of the rates experiments. They love doing those ones, but make sure you know all of the experiments you've done really, really well. There is a lot about ions in this specification, so you're going to need to know the tests for each ions. And this is an area they could make it really quite complicated. They could give you a scenario, a situation, and expect you to work out what compounds or what ions are in there. It might not just be as simple as what is a flame colour for this. You are going to need to do some thinking here because this is an area they could really make it quite Complicated. For your ionic and your covalent bonding, there is so much they can ask here. So, the structure and the properties of all the different types. So, your ionic lattice, your giant covalent, your simple covalent, and your metals. You're going to need to be able to draw the dot and cross diagrams for both ionic and covalent and describe what is going on in there. And this is an area they could make it really complicated as well. A couple of years ago, on one of the AQA papers, the examiners threw in a really hard question which really threw people. Now the reason they're doing this is to try and pick out those A-star students from the rest. Because things are getting harder, I'm afraid we can't get away from this. There are going to be A-level questions on there, there are going to be some really tricky questions on there. I'm preparing loads and loads of videos to help you with this but you're going to have to be prepared that there are going to be some really tricky things right at the end to really find who deserves those A stars. We know there's going to be a big maths component in this. So we're talking about atomic mass, we're talking about molecular mass and percentage yield. This comes up a lot. The really tricky things that are going to come up are empirical formula or reacting masses. The other thing you guys have is brought down from A level, which is isotopic mass. So I'm going to send a link over to my A level channel where I've got a video explaining how to do all of this. But this is one of the trickier things. This is where they could potentially make it hard to see who deserves those A stars. Now I mentioned rates before when we were talking about experiments. 
these are fantastic questions if they come up and they could come up as a really good a really solid four marker asking about collision theory asking about how changing this will affect the rate of reaction it is really really worth having a good solid four mark answer prepared so that in the exam if it comes up you can just go yes that is the answer. I know how to do this. And the really good thing is, there are loads of things they like asking as four markers. So energy level diagrams comes up as a four marker. The difference between pure metals and an alloy is a really solid four marker. How electricity is conducted across things. So in metals, in ions, in solution, or in graphite. Electricity conduction, again, really good solid four marker. The other one is ionic and covalent bonding. So describing what happens or describing why one thing is a gas at room temperature and why another thing is a solid at room temperature. A couple of potentials for six mark questions here are the periodic table. So patterns in reactivity, they could ask a really, really nice six marker about this. Or any of the four markers could be taken up to a six marker, or it could be an experimental question. There is lots of scope in here, but we need to expect it's going to be hard. We need to expect it's going to be tricky. I am here to help you. I know how hard you guys have been working because I can see it in all the comments and I can see it in all the questions they ask me. I'm really, really proud of how hard you've been working. Any questions you have, just pop them in the comments below or contact me on Twitter and I'll do my very, very best to help you. Good luck guys, we're nearly there. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you want to say thank you or if you want access to my online classroom priority video requests or to all the books I'm publishing, you can pop over to Connors or keep up to date with everything on my website. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And if you follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook, you'll get all the updates there. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you found this helpful. Anything else you need, any other help you need, just let me know below.